This video is for um, brow and lip waxing. And so we're gonna start a video as if we've just arrived to work. So um, what we wanna do when we first arrive to work is we wanna wash our hands. So we're gonna wet our hands and we are going to um, wash them underneath uh, the water uh, identify some liquid hand soap, get a coin size, and rub those hands together down to the wrist. And we're gonna wash the back of the hands down to the wrist. We're gonna wash the fingers. We're gonna wash the back of the fingers, fingertips and nails, between the fingers, between the fingers and the thumbs, thumbs, wrists. And you're gonna do all of that for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds before you properly rinse everything off. Then you're gonna find your disposable paper towels. Go ahead and turn that off, um, the water off, and then you will um, toss your disposable paper towels and then you're gonna find your 70% ethyl alcohol hand sanitizer and of course do your hand sanitizing. And then um, you've looked at your schedule and you know your very first appointment um, for the day is a brow and lip wax. So what you want to do is um, do all the things that you need to do for your workstation. So we're going to go over that. Um, you're going to disinfect your workstation bed and equipment using a disinfectant wipe following the manufacturer's instructions. You're going to check your equipment to ensure that all devices are in safe working order and plugged into a working receptacle. You'll gather clean supplies needed for the facial service, storing in a clean closed container you'll dispense products needed for the service. So you're gonna prepare disposable portion cups for each product with a portion of the product um, by opening the top of the container and ensuring the tip of the nozzle does not come into contact with the disposable portion cup tray, or you can remove the product with a disinfected or clean single-use spatula. Close the lid to the product and set the portion cup tray on the tray. Place the disposable table paper on the disinfected bed to ensure that the wax does not fall on the bed. Um, and then you will um, be ready to greet your clients. So let's talk about what we've already prepared on our tray. Um, we have our cotton rounds and we have our pre-epilation. We have our powder. We have our wax, which of course would really be in a wax pot. We have our um, remove, like to remove any wax residue, et cetera. And then of course our post epilation soothe. We have various um, sticks, waxing sticks here, which I would not be doing this breakup if I was in a salon. I'm doing this to conserve sticks. Um, of course we have our wax strips. We've got tweezers. I even have a little um, extra pair of scissors because I was trimming some wax strips. Disposable gloves because we do um, wear gloves for this service and I always have some paper towels or tissue extra if I need it for cleaning anything up. And then um, we've done all that. So what we need to do now is see if our client has arrived because we have to do, pardon me, a client consultation to find out if she or he can even have this service. So just a side note, we always approach the client or greet the client with clean hands, but I'm gonna be washing my hands again before I start the service. Just want to reiterate that. So we're going to greet our client and escort them to the work area. We'll assess the client's current style. We will determine the client's preferences. We will assess the client's needs. We'll assess, assess the client's skin by performing a visual skin analysis to ensure that there is no inflamed, infected, broken, raised, or swollen skin in the area to be worked on or an open wound or sore in the area to be worked on, infection or infestation, for example, lice, to prevent from safely performing the service. We'll assess the client's consultation form for any medications and products used within the last 72 hours, and we'll consult on any known allergies. We'll consult with the client on any facial surgeries within the last three months, and if the client is under a physician's care, We'll assess if the client is prone to cold sores or fever blisters. We'll assess if the client has used exfoliating or lightening agents within the last 72 hours, like alpha hydroxy acids, beta hydroxy acids, hydroquinone, etc. We'll assess facial injections within the last three weeks, like Botox or hyaluronic fillers. If the client is free from the above contraindications, you can um, proceed with the service and. Good old Sue is great and ready to go. So 
I'm gonna get her comfortable before I wash my hands. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, she doesn't need to disrobe for this service, but we'll get her on the bed, comfortable on the bed. And I have a towel here rolled that I'm gonna place on her neck for comfort. And then I've got her headband here. I've got her headband, so I'm gonna take her hair out of the way. We don't want her to get any wax or anything on her hair. Um, and then we're going to also, I'm going to give her an extra drape or towel here so that I can cover up her decollete or um, clothing, whatever the client has on. We wouldn't want any wax to get on that either. So we are going to do that. And she's nice and covered up and cozy and we'll be ready for the service. So um, it's at this point that you need to wash your hands. So I'm going to turn the sink on, get my hands wet get a coin size amount of liquid hand soap, wash my hands together down to my wrist. I'm gonna wash the back of my hands down to my wrist. I'm gonna wash my fingers and I'm gonna wash the backs of my fingers. I'm gonna wash my fingertips and my nails. I'm gonna wash between my fingers, between my fingers and my thumbs. And um, thumbs, of course, wrists, all of that for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds. And then we're gonna rinse everything underneath um, the sink, grab some disposable paper towels, turn off the water, dry everything off completely. Once you're dry, toss those paper towels, of course, grab your 70% ethyl alcohol hand sanitizer and sanitize. And once you're good and dry, and make sure you're good and dry because you have to put on disposable gloves and you do not want to put disposable gloves on wet hands. Yuck. So I'm just taking my gloves and putting them on. And um, what I'm gonna do now is get her prepared for waxing, but I'm not gonna bring wax to her without checking it on myself first. So just so you know, if I'm moving forward, I do know that I do need to check the wax on myself. So the first thing we're gonna do is that pre-epilation step. So we are gonna get that going and we're gonna make sure that we remove um, anything around the brow area, such as makeup, eye cream, um, foundation, anything she filled her brow in with all around there. Um, and um, what we're doing here is we're doing this after we have looked at her brow and assessed like hair growth. Um, sure, you looked at it out there, but now when she's laying down, it's a really good time to see, oh yes, the hair grows this way, oh, the hair grows down that way. Um, and then kind of, you know, really give it a minute to figure out. And then the center, of course, the hair grows down like figuring out all of those things, um, it's critical to uh, figure out um, what you're gonna do before you do it. So you're just not going in there. So what I'm doing right now is just making sure that all of that um, area that we're gonna be waxing is completely clean of any products. And of course, I had done that nice little visual check check to know which way that um, the hair growth patterns are so we know how to remove it and once you get this um, makeup off you know take your time do what you need to do with that it's super duper important that we um, get the area dry as you possibly can which is why we have this little powder step right here it's going to be next we have to make sure there's no moisture and it's not only to prepare that area for waxing but it's to protect it so we're gonna mat it out. We wanna protect that skin and area, protect our client. And we're doing really we're serious about that. Not one little drop of moisture. And I'm, I'm prepping this whole brow area, but of course I'm gonna be doing one brow at a time. Um, I just don't wanna have to go back and back and back. It would be 
way too laborious and take too much time, she would be here for too long. Okay, so that looks awesome. Um, so before we even go into wax, now it's time for us to check, and a great place to check is on your forearm. So I'm gonna get a little bit of the wax here, and then I'm gonna test it on my forearm, and it feels great to me. So I am going to um, now remove it. Make sure that it's all off me. And then I know I can safely move forward with the service because it was really good temperature for me, so I'm not gonna harm her or her skin. Okay, so I'm gonna do underneath the brow on this side first. Coming in at a 45 degree angle, and then I'm applying the wax in the direction of the hair growth. So I'll be removing obviously two different ways because her hair grows out and then also grows down. So what you wanna do is place your wax strip and then you're gonna press so that you see the wax coming through and once again you're pressing in the direction of the hair growth. And then you wanna get the skin nice and tight and you're gonna remove it pulling away from the direction of the hair growth, opposite direction, and then you press your finger in and it helps with that little tender sting when you remove. And we've gotta do this other area right here. Get nice and taut and press. So it looks good. I see a few things I'll need to tweeze, but nothing major. So we can move forward to the top of the brow. Coming in at a 45 degree angle, let that wax come down, and then I'm taking it in the direction of the hair growth. the skin nice and tight once again same thing and opposite direction to remove and good it's the same I see a few things that I need to um, little hairs that I need to tweeze, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove any um, excess wax residue before I go in and do that. So I've got my tweezers now, and I've got a nice little cotton round, and I'm gonna go in here and work a little bit with tweezing. So with my tweezer, one thing to know is that I'm going to be removing the hair in the direction that it grows. She had a lot I needed to get, I guess. Okay. Now we can go to the other side, the other brow. And we're gonna work um, under, do the underneath of the brow and then the over part, just like we did on the other side.
the skin tight and press. Hold that skin, press. And that will help her have a little bit of that relief when she needs it. Now the top of the brow, and kind of the same thing over here. She's got a lot of hair, so she's got a lot of hair that grows low that I'm gonna have to get in there and tweeze away on the underneath of the brow. Because I'm not, with wax, soft wax, you do not wanna go back um, a second time, ever. So you wanna get everything you can on the first go round. and tight. And press. So we're going to get some of our wax remover excess wax remover get any of that you don't want to leave any of that on her wax sticky icky and then we can grab our tweezers and our cotton round because we're gonna do some tweezing on the bottom here for sure where she needs it going within the direction of the hair growth once again I said she has seems to have a lot here that's down near the eye that we did not get with our wax. But that's okay. It's perfect now. Tweeze it works. So we have the center of the brow still here that we need to do before we can move on to the lip. So we're just gonna take a little bit of wax um, and we're gonna apply it downward in the direction of the hair growth. And we'll be pulling up to remove it so um, you're gonna get the skin nice and tight and then you can pull and press and that was good we just need to get um, our little remove the wax residue and most of this um, we got here we just need to get um, the little bridge of the nose area where you can't really get in there to wax on the sides of this here so let's grab our tweezer and our cotton round and we'll just pull and that goes down. So we're just getting in here where we need to get. Okay. Now her brow is um, done. We're gonna soothe it down with our post depilation. Make it feel really good. Nice and calming. And she'll love her brows because they look amazing. So we can move on to the lip now. And remember, if she was a different client, I, of course, every client, every time, checks the t check the temperature of the wax. 
but I don't have to check it with her because it's the same client. So the first thing we're gonna do is that um, hair analysis, that hair growth analysis. So I'm just looking at her lip. Um, it's not like two brows, you're gonna do the whole thing um, before you stop. Uh, you're not gonna go side to side. I mean, you're gonna go side to side, but not like where you go side and then remove excess, etc. You're gonna knock the whole thing out and then remove excess wax. So it seems like on the top here, she the hair's growing um, outwards away from the nose, but then right here it's growing down. And then in the center here, there's a little bit that's go growing down. So we're gonna um, get our lip area ready. And the first thing we have to do is that pre-epilation. So we are going to do a really thorough cleanse here because um, oil, makeup, all of that. It's also a tender area, so we wanna make sure that we protect that skin um, and get the hair out quickly, do all the right things for her in this area. So that's what we're gonna take a second here to do to prep it. So I'm getting the makeup, the foundation, the moisturizer, the sunscreen, any of those things that she might have on the sebum. All of that is gone. And then, of course, we have to make sure that there's no moisture whatsoever. So we have to dry it, and then we're going to use our special powder and dry the whole skin down as well. And it's interesting, you can really see her go matte, like, so you know it's working. No dewy here. Okay. So we know um, the hair growth pattern, we've already figured that out, so we're gonna work on that first. We're gonna work on applying um, the wax. And we're gonna do this side, obviously, first. And we're going in at that 45 degree angle and then we're going to let the wax come down onto the skin and then we can spread it out so the wax we're going to go in the direction of the hair growth and then when we get to the side of the mouth here we turn it down because the hair grows downward the downward motion So we're going to have two different area directions that we remove from. Pressing it within the, the direction of the hair growth, hold the skin tight, remove it away from the direction of the hair growth and press. And this area can be a little bit painful, so I'm trying to get in and get out, like do it as nicely and as quickly as possible. All right, we're going to go down with this hair removal part right here. Hold the skin taut, remove, and press. So we are gonna move on before we do any extra remove, just once again being mindful of the client's time because it can be, that area here can be painful. Well, they can all be painful, but I feel like this one is extra tender. doing my best because obviously we're not going to be doing it over again so just take my time and concentrate down part, hold it tight, up and press. And we still have that center part that where the little up and down in the middle of the 
upper lip is, that hair is growing down. So I'm gonna take a little smaller applicator here to apply that in a downward motion. And also up to the nostrils, nostrils right here, I feel like it's a little bit we need to get to. pulling up for this so most important right here is that you hold that tight skin and then up and zinger press 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 because that's a zinger Whoo, that was a tough one she thought I did too okay so we are going to remove excess wax so I can tweeze any stray hairs that for some reason we didn't get with the wax you don't want to send her home with wax on her face or any hair on the face where she wanted it removed. That's the whole reason she's coming here. Okay, so there's no extra wax residue. Let's grab our cotton round and our tweezers. And I just see a couple little bit right here, right up toward the nose, which is nice and painful for her. I'm removing within the direction of the hair growth. And no, it's not fun. This part for her is not fun. Oh, thank goodness. Just a couple more right up there. And we got it. Phew, woo, she is over it. Okay, so let's get our soothe on her. On the lip. Oh, yeah, that feels better. I know it does. No extra wax anywhere on our friend Sue. She is a trooper. She can get waxed over and over again. She's fine. And um, once you make sure everything's the way you want it to be, you can present your work to your client. So you get to say, oh my goodness, Sue, look how good your brows and your lip look. I know it's a little pink right now, but don't worry, that'll calm right down. Um, how do you like it? Oh, I love it. Oh, good. Okay, so. Um, now you're going to help her remove the drape, help her up, take off her headband, um, and then get her situated so that you can get her checked out. And um, you can remove your disposable gloves and throw them away. And what you want to do at this point with your client is discuss um, maintenance and aftercare. Um, she um, is so happy that she's going to go ahead and book her next waxing service, which is great to hear. Um, repeat customer, yay, yay. Love that. Love, love to hear that. So we are getting her checked out and on her merry way and she's super happy and you've got a super busy day so let's talk about what um, we have to do now um, to um, get ready for our next client so of course we um, will be tossing any single-use item which I'm getting ready to do right now these um, you know your little wax strips and sticks um, and all of those these your disposable cups they're gone gloves anything like that they are out of here um, you will get your implements and you will put them in a closed container labeled to be disinfected you'll get all of your laundry and um, place it in um, a closed container until laundry service then you will um, identify a proper cleaning agent, read manufacturer's directions, follow manufacturer's directions for mixing usage. You're going to wipe down your workstation and area with cleaning solution to remove debris. You'll identify disinfectant that is bactericidal, virucidal, and fungicidal, EPA approved for use in salon setting. You'll follow manufacturer's directions for mixing and or using appropriate aerosol disinfectant. You will disinfect electrical equipment and store it in a clean area separate from other implements. And because you use the disinfectant, you will have gloves on again, so toss those gloves, and then you're gonna wash your hands, final steps. So you're gonna wet your hands under the water, find the liquid hand soap, you're gonna wash your hands 
um, down to the wrist. You're going to wash the back of the hands down to the wrist. You're going to wash your um, fingers. You're going to wash the back of your fingers. You're going to wash your fingertips and nails. You're going to wash between your fingers. You're going to wash between your fingers and your thumbs. You're going to wash your thumbs. You're gonna wash your wrists. You're gonna do all of that um, for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds. Thoroughly, properly rinse them underneath the sink. Grab disposable paper towel and turn that sink off. Then you can dry your hands completely and throw your paper towels in the trash. Then you'll find that hand sanitizer that's that 70% ethyl alcohol and you will sanitize your hands. Um, once your hands are dry, you are ready to set up for your next service and client. So that concludes your video on brow and lip wax.